everybody, I'm Todd McFarlane, and you're watching the Venom Vlog. 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 The Venom Vlog with Seat, my man. Make sure you catch up with Big Bad Seat here. And pronounce my man's name right before I unleash some carnage on that ass. Nicely done, Venom Vlog. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are going to talk about Extreme Carnage Agony, which actually just came out in shops this week. So finally I'm catching up on all these comic books and I have a lot more to cover. Hopefully I can get them all in before the movie comes out. I don't really do reviews, more like discussions. So I will show off a couple pages of art and like kind of break down what my thoughts are on some of the scenes in the book. So I will get into spoilers. And if you want, before you leave though, if you want to buy this book and you just don't have a chance to get to the comic store, I have a chance for you right now to get a free digital copy. Boom, there you go. First person to put that code in, go to that website, put that code in, and that'll get you a free copy of Agony. Anytime I review a new Marvel book, if they have a code in it, I always like to give them away on these episodes. Or not really review, but discuss, like I said. So there you go. First person put that code in. Um, and if it doesn't work, if you go to try to put the code in and it doesn't work, that means someone already beat you to it. So you got to be really fast to so make sure we hit that notification bell so that you get alerted every time I put new videos up. And if it's a comic discussion for a new comic book, definitely you know hit that video as soon as you can look for the code i always keep it up on screen for 20 seconds um, and then use it get that comic book and then let me know down below if you got the free comic give your review of the book down below in the comment section all right so extreme carnage agony so this series again it's been a little all over the place i said that in the previous review with uh with toxin and then now i'm gonna say it again with agony we have uh, the editors of this book. Well, first of all, this issue is written by Alyssa Wong, um, who's written one of the issues before, I believe. And then Fran Galan and uh, Danio Bayruth are the artists of this book. And I did say this, uh, or I would say this book does look pretty good. I think um, Bayruth did some of the art in a previous issue. So I kind of like the look of this book. But we have more inconsistencies in the story. And again, I, that always falls to me on editorial. We have uh, Danny Kazem, Tom Groneman as the assistant editors. Devin Lewis as the main editor who edited all the, you know, Venom stuff by Donnie Cates, which had contradictions a lot. I pointed a lot of those out, especially in Absolute Carnage. I thought that was kind of a mess of a series. And King and Black also kind of a mess of a series uh, from an editorial standpoint. A lot of you probably just enjoyed the story and that's fine. But these editorial things, I'm kind of like, uh, these could have been done better. More attention could have been paid to them. And that's what I feel like in this. Uh, so that's why I mentioned these names because some of my criticism for this series is mainly on them. I mean, I think uh, Steve Orlando and, uh, and the, writer, the different writers, Alyssa Wong, um, Philip Kennedy Johnson, like other different writers on this book, I think they are doing a good job for the most part for what they have. Some of the dialogue is a little bad at times, and, but mostly the characters, I understand their motivations for the most part. Although I feel like Hank is getting kind of the short end of the stick. I feel like no one's really informing Hank on what he's supposed to be doing like truly supposed to be doing and because of that he's unprepared for a lot of situations and that's what ends up biting him in the ass in this one and also making flash not look like the greatest guy in the world for getting hank involved so we're gonna dive into that uh, sometimes when you you know I, i'm all for characters looking bad to an extent because no one should be perfect and i hate when characters are too perfect but this is a really bad screw up in my mind like this is this is amateur hour and flash is not an amateur so I feel like it's kind of making Flash look bad, and I don't. I wish that wasn't happening. Like, so we'll see. We'll get to the end of this, and plus there's still one more issue. So, for all we know, things aren't really playing out the way they look like they're playing out. So we'll wait for the final issue before we talk about the whole series and, and give our final thoughts, obviously. But just for this issue, um, this one starts off, and it actually takes place weeks ago before the invasion of King and Black, and you have this woman named Gemma, and she's working for Crane. And she's kind of buddying up to her son, uh, or Crane's son, Arthur. Arthur was kind of in the first issue a little bit, and he was talking to his dad, and he's like, do you really believe in this message you're saying? And Senator Crane's like, oh, not I mean, a little bit. You know, we talked about that, where he's kind of being a politician about it. He's like, well, no, I just know it's a hot-button topic, so I'm, I'm saying I stand on this side of the hot-button uh, hot topic so I can rally supporters. And then that's how politicians are. They're, they don't really care about the stuff they are saying uh, that they care about on TV. They just know that by saying they care about it, one side will hate them and one side will love them. And that helps them in the long run, um, you know, either stay in office or at least get popular enough to be considered to stay in office or run for office. So again, just dumb politicians, you know, trying to manipulate people with just through bull crap. And um, so that's kind of what the start of this is. So Arthur is 
seems like a more genuine guy. He's like, hey, you know, Gemma, everyone seems to walk over, walk all over you here. They, you know, they're like, hey, she's like a actual communications director, but guys like, you know, these like, I guess, male chauvinist pigs that work there. They're like, hey, honey, go get us coffee. Go get us coffee, toots. You know, they're kind of those kind of guys, uh, very caricature-like. Um, so she goes out to get them coffee, and then boom, that's during the King in Black thing. And then it cuts to now, where she is now the host of Agony. Although we don't know that at first, but you have Arthur here showing up, giving her coffee, and it looks like she is being taken more seriously around the office because obviously something's changed about her. She has a more of a backbone, I guess, now because she is bonded with Agony. And you can kind of tell because they make her clothes Agony colors, like purple. But I like that. I mean, it's, it's cool. It's a subtle thing. But basically, Arthur's like, hey, you know what? You know, you've been in this office this whole time during this whole campaign. Maybe she'd go out and have some fun. And so that's exactly what she does. So while she goes out jogging around, uh, you know, the, the monuments and stuff at, uh, at you know, Washington, D.C., you have Flash and Bren and, uh, and Andy here who... At the end of the last book, they flew off with wings. Like, we're going into battle. Yay. And then here they're like just walking. And I'm like, I, okay, I guess. So maybe the event with the president hasn't happened yet. Because they're all flying like it's happening right now at the end of the last issue. Um, so now it looks like, oh, okay, they, they, they arrived early. <laughs> so now they're playing it low key. The Flash is like, all right, we got to get a hold of Hank. We're meeting up with him here in Washington. I already contacted him, as we saw in this last issue. Uh, so that continuity is right. Hank was contacted and talks him. But Hank says, I think I'm being followed. And guess who he thinks he's being followed by? Actually, he says, I think I'm being followed. They got me made. And he he's being followed by Gemma, uh, Agony. Uh, that's who's in this book. She's spying on him. But yet in this one, she's nowhere near him. Um, <laughs> and Hank is on a train in that issue going to meet Flash at somewhere, you know, like some location in Washington. And she's just, you know, she was at work earlier. Now she's jogging around. So I'm like, so when did she go follow Hank, uh, you know, so I don't know. So she fi finds these guys in the park, and of course they, you know, make passes at her. They say they're going to do horrible things to her, and so she spews acid and kills all of them. Um, and then you find out that she does this because she has a collection. She actually has a collection of body parts at, at her apartment, and she's like hanging uh, one of the guy's arms on her wall, and she has some of their severed heads, uh, doing like the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil thing, and, and so. She's pretty brutal. She's like a real Ed Gein going on here. Um, so while she's, you know, decorating her apartment and talking to Carnage, who shows up in the hive to talk to her uh, and then unites the, the Life Foundation symbiotes and they're all like working out their plan. You go back to Flash's place, which I guess he has a place in Washington, D.C. Um, I didn't know that. I thought he was in Philadelphia, but then he was dead. So I don't know what's going on. So anyway, back at Flash's place, um, you have Hank there. And he actually looks like Hank. I'm like, oh, okay, that looks like the guy from the previous issues. Not the guy who was in this, who doesn't look like Hank that much at all, except for the goatee. Um, but this is Hank, and he's basically saying, like, um, he doesn't suspect I'm spying on him. It's amazing what people will say in front of you when they consider you unimportant. But in the last issue, he said, I think they're on to me. And there was literally agony was trailing him. So this is just bad like and i mean like from an editing standpoint that's a big screw up uh, in my opinion it doesn't ruin the story at all for the most part but it is it, the inconsistency is pretty bad now i will before i sl you know slam that too much i will say there's a chance i could be missing something or missed an explanation or maybe he was speaking not seriously in the last one maybe he was sarcastically saying i think i'm being followed I don't know why they would do that in writing like why would you have someone talk sarcastically about something serious like that so I don't know if I'm missing something or if there's a dot I'm not connecting, let me know. It's possible with me, obviously. Um, I could easily be making a mistake. But it just seems like from these two issues that Hank doesn't look the same. And he and he has he says one thing in this book and the opposite thing in this book. So that kind of frustrated me a little bit. Um, but anyway, they talk Andy into going back into the void to see if Carnage is there. And he is there uh, talking to Agony and talking to the other Life Foundation symbiotes at like a like there's like a bar set up like this. He's the bartender, and he asks, you know, Agony, he's like, look, everyone else is on the team. Everyone joined in. You're still on the fence. I mean, you're here with us, but you're not really playing ball. Like, I need you to play ball. Like, can I make you a drink? And she says, yeah, I want, like, a gin and tonic. And he's like, okay. And he mixes a bunch of stuff together and hands it to her, and she goes, this is not a gin and tonic. He goes, yeah, I don't know how to make drinks. Like, I'm, I'm Cletus Cassidy or Carnage. Like, I, I, you know, I was like, I'm going to pour blood in it. That's pretty much all I know how to do. So, uh, so they're there talking, and Andy's going into the void, 
and she's about to hear their plan and then carnage goes hey andy come on over have a seat and she's like oh no they made me so that's when flash and bren as toxin pull her out and they get back into their wing mode and fly in and that's when you know hank is realizing wait a minute senator crane is carnage like how how could you send me in there and not tell me all this and he goes and then you guys are symbiotes like what did you get me involved in and i agree I agree with this. So Alyssa Wong, you as a writer, thank you for putting that in there. I don't know if that was you or an editor or someone, whoever put that in there. Thanks for at least acknowledging that. Like, I think that makes Flash look terrible as a friend. And not only that, but two issues ago, Flash trash talked, you know, Hank to Andy at another bar. <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's that's my friend. I, I got him involved. And she goes, wait a minute, didn't you say he screwed up in the military? And she you literally used the word screw up. So to me, I'm like, I, I don't like how they're making Flash just, that's kind of a D-bag thing. He gets his friend involved, doesn't tell his friend the truth about what they're involved in. And then he basically like uh, trash talks his friend behind his back and then spills all this stuff on his friend now. Like, hey, the guy you're working for, he's probably Carnage. And I'm a symbiote and we're going to go in and fight him now. And Hank's like, what the heck, man? I didn't sign up for any of this. Like, I just wanted a job. Like, I came back from the military and no one, I had trouble finding work and I just wanted something that made me feel useful. And I was a, a security guy for a senator. I felt useful again. And now this has all just been a BS lie. And I agree. I don't think it makes, you know, a Flash look like a good character at all. And where's Iron Man in all this? Iron Man set up this book with Flash and he's nowhere to be found now. So who knows? <laughs> like I, now it's just, you know, whatever. So anyway, so while that happens, we're getting into a big spoiler here. The president on the next day, um, he's, you know, giving his big speech again, very anticlimactic. Like they, they do this thing where they fly off, like we got to go save the president. And then they wait a whole day. It says the next day and they're just off standing by. I'm like, why didn't they go to the president beforehand? Like if this was a whole day later, they had a whole 24 hours with their powers. They probably could have got to the president and you could have had like, you know, talks and shape shift and look like the president or something. I mean, you could have done something clever. Uh, or anything i don't know uh but no whatever so the president is giving a speech these guys have no freaking plan they're just on standby waiting for an attack they're going to just react that's their big plan um and then they're calling hank and they're like hank what's going on and of course hank is made they, it, like he even thought it in the last issue why would he go back to that job if he thought he was made but then in this book they had a, he had to say he didn't think he was made so that he would go back to his job it's like So anyway, the book is not good <laughs> on some levels. Um, and so what happens is, is because, you know, Hank wasn't given all the information, Hank gets killed and stabbed by Carnage uh, and the Life Foundation symbiotes that are around him before, you know, while the president's giving a speech before Senator Crane goes up. And you find out that Senator Crane is actually not the host of Carnage. Um, this is a big spoiler. Uh, it's actually Arthur Crane, that a very nice guy who... We just learned more about in this issue, so they telegraphed it pretty pretty well, like, because he's in the background for the first two issues, so of course you don't really suspect him, and then in this issue, he's just, like, there always talking to Agony and, like, you know, telling her to go out and have some fun and do all these things, and, oh, I may run for senator one day, maybe even against my dad, all this stuff, and it's it was pretty clear, like, three pages into this that this was going to be the twist. So, uh, but of course it was a twist that doesn't feel natural. It feels natural if this was, like, part two of the story, but because they were like, we're going to be clever and just not show much of Arthur in the other books, um, then it'll be a big twist. And then this book starts off with a ton of Arthur. And I'm like, why are they showing so much Arthur? And then I was like, oh, Crane's not actually the, the actually Carnage, it's Arthur. And then when I got to the last page, I'm like, yeah, that's not surprising. So that's what happens. And it looks like he killed Hank in the process. So now Hank is dead because of Flash, not informing him uh, that he was in danger the whole time. And because the writers chose have Hank be smart in the last issue when he realized he was being tailed and then for some reason be dumb in this issue and say that he's not being tailed and no one suspects him. Uh, so that way he can go back to work and get killed at the end of this issue. Uh, so not very good, not very good editing uh, or writing or whoever's idea that was. I'm going to say it's a combination of both probably, but no one was paying attention. Someone was definitely sleeping on the job on that one. And I think that's pretty lazy. So for me, this series has been like one good issue, one eh. One good, one man. Like, that's kind of how this whole thing has been. I liked the toxin issue. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, at least the brand stuff with his dad. Uh, but then when you get to this, um, and the, it's more the 
political stuff and the behind the scenes stuff and like everyone planning and plotting, but no one's doing it cleverly. No one's coming up with actual ideas or an actual strategy. And meanwhile, these are characters like Flash Thompson, who's worked for the government, who knows how to do strategy. And you have none of that happening here. Hank, who's been in the military, should be way more aware uh, than of his surroundings and everything going on there. He should have known something else was up. So when he said, I think I'm being killed, I'm like, that makes sense. That's what a soldier would say in this situation. And then in this issue, he says the opposite. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought he was smart in the last issue. Why is he dumb in this issue? So for me, I ultimately am just, this is a mixed bag. I was excited at first. There's even a line in this issue, I think, or maybe it was the previous issue where they, a uh, toxin issue, where Carnage says, like, yeah, they're like, where's Eddie Brock? And he goes, ah, Eddie's like a god now. He doesn't care about me. These are the excuses they give or the reasons they give for why Eddie's not around. And I also feel like that's really lazy. Like, Eddie... The problem is Eddie can solve this problem in a second, so fine. Extreme Carnage, one giant 100-page book written by one writer, involved the Life Foundation symbiotes, tell this story, condense it, um, and have Eddie Brock be part of the story and give a reason maybe why he can't, for some reason, get back into the void or something. Like, come up with something. Um, even if it doesn't make a ton of sense, at least try. But just having Eddie out of sight, out of mind is really lazy. So for me, I'm just, um, I've kind of lost interest in this book, but since there's only one issue left and we've already reviewed everything so far, I'll pick it up. And plus I want the combining covers because it is nice to see the Life Foundation symbiotes again. It's nice to see them try to do something with them, um, but I just feel like this wasn't, this could have been a little bit more interesting and clever at times. And I just feel like no one felt like bringing that to the table. They just felt like, you know, doing the bare minimum and not even paying attention to what they wrote two issues ago or an issue ago. And because of that, it, it's it's a mess like a lot of the other, you know, Devin Lewis edited Venom books, in my opinion. So thanks so much for watching the show. I Like I said, I've ranted enough. I think I've talked long enough. It's almost midnight. I got to go to bed. So uh, so I'll put this up, uh, you know, in the, these three episodes up in the next couple of days. I recorded all of them tonight, obviously. And, uh, and I'll get them all up to you as soon as I can. And hopefully we'll get more movie news soon. And I'll try to get into the Ravencroft miniseries at some point. We'll try to wrap that up before the movie comes out. Because obviously Ravencroft plays a part in the new Venom movie. And I'd like to discuss that miniseries because it does go into some new added lore to that building in that miniseries. And I definitely want to talk about it before the movie comes out. So I'll try to do that fairly soon. So thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.